Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In this week's episode, we're going to do some more work with our 220 grain Sierra Match Kings and Alliance Reloader 26. Stick around! Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you can get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. Guys, welcome back. We are again revisiting the load that we have worked with before. In case you're unfamiliar, we'll go over real quick. Our test platform for today is our Thompson Center Compass, chamber and 300 Winchester Magnum. We have replaced the plastic factory stock with a Boyd's Pro Varmint laminated hardwood stock with adjustable comb height. We've added a 20 MOA EGW long action scope base. We're using an SWFA fixed 16 power scope, mil mil. It's currently wearing 30 millimeter Seekins Precision Scope Rings. It also has an SWFA bubble level. We've upgraded our factory trigger with an M Carbo Trigger Spring Kit. And we're also reducing our recoil with a Precision Armament M4-72-308 brake. Now guys, in today's video, we're going to further some testing that we've done in the past. If you're not familiar, I'll put a quick card up if you want to go check that video out. But we're probably going to summarize all of the pertinent information for today's video anyway. If you remember the last time when we were working with this 220 grain Sierra Match King and Reloader 26, we were basically just shooting a velocity string to get a baseline for velocity and pressure with this combination in our rifle. I'll put the chart on our screen so we can talk about it a little bit here as we talk about our load data for today. As you guys can see, not a very pretty load velocity graph here compared to some of the graphs we have looked at on the channel. The only real flat plateau that we see here is way down at 71.3 and 71.6 grains. Keep in mind, 71.3 grains is certainly not the minimum charge for this load. And that's one of the first things that we're going to need to address. So since we've done that, there's actually three things that we need to talk about. Number one, we ran some CBTO testing with this particular projectile in our rifle and found, at least relatively with our three shot groups, the sweet spot away from our rifling seemed to be somewhere around 20 thousandths. So simply what we should do probably is load 20 thousandths off our lands and get to the range. But it's not quite that easy. In case you guys missed it, I'll put a card up if you did. We ran the Tubbs final finish system through our rifle. In that video, I showed the before and after through that process. So if you're interested, I really would encourage you to go get that out. But the side effect of running that system through our rifle, it's actually extended the distance to the lands for our projectile. Instead of just being able to load our 20 thousandths off the lands at the previously determined dimension, we're going to have to load it even longer to be able to get that length. Now, the other thing which has also occurred, since we made our initial video, Sierra has released new load data for this exact combination. Even though, according to Alliance load data, 74.2 grains being max with this particular load, Sierra is actually listing the maximum charge for this down at 72.2 grains. Now, ordinarily, I'm not one to give up 100 feet per second where it doesn't make sense, but looking back at our velocity graph that we generated, there really wasn't any plateaus up there that I really wanted to test very badly anyway. At 73.7 and 74 grains, maybe that there's something there, but it certainly doesn't look as flat as our velocity we achieved down at the 71.3 and 71.6 grain loads. Say what you want, guys. For today, we're actually going to be backing off from max. Depending on whose data you want to believe, it depends on how far. But for today's load, that's what it's going to be. So trying to make sure we cover everything as accurately as we can, we're actually going to be loading in two tenth grain increments today. We're actually going to be starting down to 71.0 grains and going up in two tenths of grain increments all the way to 71.8 grains. Since we actually ran the Tubbs final finish system, our CBTO to get to the lands for this projectile is somewhere around 2.917 inches. So 20 thousandths off is 2.897 inches for the CBTO. Unfortunately, that's also going to put us almost 20 thousandths too long to be able to fit in our magazine. To test that at 20 thousandths off the lands where we found the best accuracy with our overall length testing, it's going to force us not to be compatible with our magazine today, unfortunately. If we find a sweet load today, we might just play around with it, see if we can actually get it to fit in our magazine and still shoot well, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just see how today's testing goes. So the cartridge-based O-Jive we're going to be loading to is 2.897 inches, again, about 20 thousandths off the lands. We are back in the ADG brass that we actually tested this initial velocity curve in. It's been annealed, resized, trimmed for length, chamfered indie bird, and ready to go. It's also been primed with our Fed 215M primers. And with all this information, basically guys, our target velocity we're planning to hit is somewhere around exactly the 2780 feet per second that we achieved before. We plan on testing well below and just above that velocity node we saw before, and we're hoping to get some accuracy. So without further ado, let's get these out to the range, shoot some groups, and see where we're at. 
Well guys, I know I said we were gonna go to the range, but I'm gonna have one disclaimer. I'll let you know before we get to the video. In the video, you're gonna be able to see my Caldwell front shooting rest. I believe it's gonna be causing somewhat of an issue throughout most of our shooting today. You're gonna see it walking a little bit back and forth on the bench today. And I think that's gonna cause us some elevation issues. Just so you guys know, I'm going to alleviate this problem. I've got a new front rest on the way, far higher quality than this particular model. And I'm really looking forward to doing some low development with it. However, all results are not lost for today. Let's go take a look at the shooting. We'll come back. Well guys, hopefully you survived and appreciated it anyway. I really would like to see what the groups look like today without having the issues with the front rest that unfortunately we had for most of the shooting today. And honestly, likely the next load development will go over as well. I will thank Gianni G for bringing that to my attention. He mentioned my 6.5 Creedmoor series. When I went and reviewed the video for this, it is obvious that this is moving all over the place. And since I'd read that comment, I was paying more attention to it when I was shooting these groups. 300 Winchester Magnum sure has a tendency to exacerbate certain things, and I think that was part of our issue today. Nonetheless, I do think we have some interesting data here, so let's go over it. At 71 grains, we had an estimate of velocity of roughly 2775 feet per second. Our actual achieved velocity in that group was 2751, standard deviation of 10.6, extreme spread of 23, and unfortunately a 1.918 MOA group. You will notice that windage is very good, elevation is what our problem is, had we actually had perfect elevation, our width is, on that group is only 0.309 inches. Moving on to 71.2 grains, our estimated velocity would have theoretically bumped up to 2785 according to our load data. 2749 is what we got, so we actually dropped two feet per second on average, dropped our standard deviation down a little bit to 8.5, extreme spread of the same 23, and we did shrink our group a little bit to 1.154 MOA. At 71.4 grains, our estimated velocity was 2790. Actual achieved velocity bumped up to 2765. Standard deviation of an unfortunate 11.6 extreme spread of 26 and a 1.421 MOA group. At 71.6 grains, our estimated velocity would have been 2795. We achieved our actual velocity from our previous testing, what we thought we were going to roughly of 2777 feet per second. A channel record standard deviation in 300 Winchester Magnum on the channel here so far of 3.3 feet per second, extreme spread of seven and a 0.975 MOA group. Even with our rest situation, I'm gonna call that load a win today. At 71.8 grains, our estimated velocity would have theoretically went up to 2805, basically had the same velocity again at 2779. Standard deviation opened up a little bit to 8.5 with an extreme spread of 20, and the group opened up to 1.534 MOA. As I've done in the past and will probably do again, uh, we will put the 6.5 guys load chart up. We will evaluate some of our load velocity data based on it. You will notice the actual three shots over to the right. Those are all actual loads from our previous round of testing for our velocity node testing that we performed before. So you can see the 71.3 grains we'd previously achieved 2782 at 71.6, 2783, and 71.9 of 2799. Keep in mind though, fire forming was occurring during that as well. 
Now trying to narrow it on a load here. That's 71 and 71.2. Basically that's right on top of each other. Bumping up to 74 grains, you'll see a little bit of that node shift starting to happen where it's trying to shoot that higher velocity as well as a little bit below that. At 71.6 grains, the picture tells the whole story. An extreme spread of 7 feet per second. Certainly, like I said, the best we've shot so far in 300 Winchester Magnum on this channel. We'll certainly be looking in the future to see if we can get those statistics to repeat or see if it was just a fluke. I'm really hoping. That looked like a velocity note in our previous testing. Certainly looks like a velocity note again. Not quite as wide as we'd hoped, but I think stepping these two tenth of grain increments, we can kind of see where we're going because at 71.9 grains, we again saw that transition up in our previous data. And at 71.8, we can see we're right in that transition mode where we're starting to open that standard deviation up again and switch to that next velocity node. And just to cheat a little bit, if you've been watching the channel, the next load we're gonna shoot is H1000. When Scott Saturday goes over that method of the 10 shot shootout, he mentions that actually finding those same velocity nodes with different powders. And I'll already tell you right out of the gate that 2780 feet per second is actually our best load in our H1000 group testing that we're going to have coming down the road. The group that shot 2780 feet per second in that particular testing is the one that's going to give us the best statistics for that group as well. So different powder, identical velocity, and the best standard deviations. Hopefully it's not a fluke. More testing is the only way we're going to know. But by that time, we should have a new front rest, load some more of these up, and hopefully be able to verify that as a load worth shooting. We'd certainly like to go up a little bit higher, but moving these 220 grains at 2780 feet per second, if we can get that kind of velocity spread, that's really what we're looking for. Anyway, we'll take a quick shot of the brass just because we usually do. We didn't see any pressure signs and we tested higher than this. Certainly not going to say anything different today. Look at it again if you'd like anyway. One other thing of note that I didn't mention, these, these loads all did fit the overall length of the magazine. However, they just weren't back far enough and I wasn't able to actually magazine feed these. All this testing was done single feed. And so the distance from our lands is just going to have to be a little bit bigger if we're going to be able to actually load them in our magazine. Probably having to go back somewhere around that 3.45 like we initially had thought to get these to feed. But only more testing will know. But at least it looks like we've got a node to chase and probably we'll do some more work with this setup as long as our supply for loader 26 holds out. Anyway, even if you're not in a 300 Winchester Magnum, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please post those in the comments section below. If you like the content, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you next week, and until then, stay safe in small groups.